Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This homie and peace out to the rest of you. Black Hawk, the sign of black in again. Asking you to hit that share button. Because um, the message is more important than the messenger. If you've hit like or subscribe, thank you. And I mean that from the bottom of my black heart. Currently at this point, um, I'm hearing the arguments against Kobe based on two things. One is the rape accusation, and the other one is uh, with whom he was, to whom he was married, and uh, with whom he slept. Now, I'm going to make this plain that in my own uh, moral compass, which really doesn't come from me, but rather from a revelation, uh, he was wrong because he committed adultery. He admitted such, but he was wrong for committing adultery. Um, he was dumb as hell because he committed adultery, not necessarily with women of any particular race, but specifically with white women. Not you got to be an idiot to do something like that. Um, and he did not expect the rape charge. He should have known that was coming. And uh, these two were tied together, of course. The way that I'm going to have to address them, in a sense, alaykum, in a sense, ties them two together. So, first off, let me address the rape charge. I read the summary of the case, and I'm going to admit that I got this off of Wikipedia. But when I look at Wikipedia, I look not at Wikipedia only. I I look at the sites that Wikipedia, the citations, the sources that Wikipedia takes. The sources were newspaper clippings from the time and uh, some public court records. In other words, uh, a Wikipedia article by itself is not good enough, but you can see if its citations are shaky or shady, dodgy, and if they are, then you know not to trust it. Because people can't say anything, that's true. But what I saw in this case was that uh, Wikipedia, uh, that particular Wikipedia article was not dodgy or based on dodgy citations. The story appears to be this. He got involved in consensual sex, but he was rough. She didn't like it anymore, but she never expressed the lack of consent. Uh, and when she didn't agree to let him nut on her face, she, that's when he stopped. Um, she did have evidence of some type of vaginal trauma, but the defense pointed out that it was also consistent with it simply having sex with multiple partners in a two-day period. Uh, she wasn't going to testify, so he couldn't be convicted. But based on the actual uh, testimonies, it appears that they started off consensual, which means that it was legal according to the law, and uh, that at this point, uh, well, at some point he got rough because he likes to choke. And then she wasn't with it no more. She didn't like it. She wasn't feeling it. But she was late in telling him no. And then that's when he quit. So she really, in her mind, doesn't feel like it was consensual. In other words, the quality of it wasn't very good. It was a bit rough. But um, he... Um, he wasn't out to violate without consent and didn't do so. That's what it seems like. Now, of course, many feminists are going to say, oh, see, you're trying to explain it and justify it. No, not really. I'm just basing, I mean, I just read the summary and that's what it sounded like. That's all. That's just what the summary seemed to be. I'm not saying I was in the room and I saw everything happen. I'm saying that this is what the summary paints. But I want to also point out that he was in Eagle, Colorado, a very, very, very white place, and he was still acquitted because she wasn't going to testify. If she wanted him behind bars in Eagle, Colorado, all she would have had to do was show up and he would have been convicted and he would have gotten uh, many years, maybe even life. His family would have been destroyed. That's real. That's just how it works. But we're supposed to sit up here and believe that 
Uh, he absolutely did rape her because she's a woman and she says so. And black women um, that are of the militant feminist strand want us to take her word for it because she's a woman, forgetting she's a white woman accusing a black man in a country famous for this sort of thing. And it, now you have even sisters uh, blaming black men for rapes they didn't commit to throw them under the bus. The next thing I want to point out, uh, and granted, like I said, my issue is with the adultery. That's why I take issue. And the reckless adultery with a woman of the same race that historically was famous at that point for falsely accusing exactly your demographic, the black man. The big, tall, athletic black man with a heavy voice at that. So there's something else to it, too. Um, the next thing that they're going for is why he was, why he went somewhere with Brandy, took Brandy to a prom, and they didn't work out, didn't go anywhere. But then he winds up with a Mexican woman and he cheats with all these other women. Well, let's talk about Brandy. Brandy is from not far from where I'm from. I mean, it would take a few hours to drive, but, but compared to the rest of the U.S., she's not really far from where I'm from. I'm from the Gulf Coast. She's from Mississippi, which is a Gulf Coast state. I don't even remember exactly where in Mississippi she's from. It doesn't matter. Now, Brandy, uh, you know, Brandy's a, a, when she started off, she was a typical country girl, but she could sing and she could act enough, <laughs> enough to get a role on Moesha. And even the name Moesha, are you serious? They couldn't come up with something better than that? That's so stereotypical. <laughs> but, um, you see, she went with him and she was more famous at that time than he was though both of them kind of were i forgot what year it was but she was you know more famous than he was uh it didn't go anywhere for whatever reason but i'm gonna tell you why it should not have gone anywhere many of you you might remember especially those of you who were into celebrity gossip you may remember at some point in the late 90s, I think it was, or maybe it was, no, no, it would have been in the late 90s. She went to an HBCU game. Uh, yeah, an HBCU football game on the Gulf Coast, actually. And she vanished for a weekend. And, uh, I mean, her security, I'm sure they knew where she was, but she was pretty much, you know, she went to the game and then she left with the drum major and uh, she was gone for the weekend. That weekend she spent with the drum major of one of those college bands. When the weekend was over, he was back in his hometown with a bunch of clothes, new clothes. I know this guy. He and I are childhood enemies. Now, I don't think he still considers me an enemy to this day, but I, I still wouldn't hang out with this dude. I'm not going to tell you what he's like today, per se. I'm going to tell you what he was like when we were growing up, because that's when I knew him. He was a coward. He was a very talented basketball player and a talented dancer. He was of normal intelligence. Um, he is, was and is taller than many of us. Um, and he always looked for easy fights with people. When it came to fighting, his only rule was, I have to be bigger than this guy to fight him. And, I, and then I'll be brave and I'll do and say anything disrespectful. I don't care. But if they're big than me, I'm going to show them respect. I'm not going to try to fight him. We cool, bro. We cool. That's, that's how he was. He just that dude. We all know someone like that. But we also knew they were cowards. And girls growing up knew that these niggas were cowards and wouldn't mess with them. This nigga got a pass. He was a coward. He chased after... When he was in eighth grade, he chased after a third grader to try to fight him. When we were in eighth grade, he chased after a third grader, and he and I wound up getting into a fight. Because I was outraged at that point. He won that fight by one lick. But again, he you know he was bigger, so he was confident. He wasn't scared. 
And, you know, I was a little light skinned nigga with so-called good hair. So, you know, I couldn't fight. At least that was the idea. In reality, he just got the first lick. I fought him again three years later. I never forgave him for that. I fought him again three years later after pretending like we were cool and I was scared of him. I showed up in his driveway and I watched him back down to two other guys who were one his size, the other one bigger. Back down like a bitch. Then got into an argument with me so we could fight. And I was waiting for it. I knew it was coming. I didn't beat this nigga's ass and sling him around and all that stuff. I just simply clocked him first. Uh, got him on his knees. We tangled. He caught up with me. And then when we tangled, we were tangled up again. And I was about to get the upper hand because I had a weapon. And I was going to put this nigga in a coma. The only fair fight is when I win because I'm the good guy. Remember that. And I was getting ready to pull the weapon out and just put this nigga in a coma. Because that's what he deserved. In front of this girl he was talking to. And he called my friends and said, come get your boy. So he threw in the towel, and that's why I didn't hurt this nigga. But he even tried to say, we cool, Black Card. I'm like, we ain't never cool. We're never going to be cool. Now, since I made that promise to him back then, I keep it today. If I go back and I visit my hometown and I see him, I don't uh, say anything. I waved to him once by accident because I didn't know it was him in the truck. I'm going to put it to you like that. I'm a cold for the mucker when it comes to stuff like this. And I don't forgive anything people do wrong after puberty unless they say I did wrong. I want to make amends. He never did that. We're not cool. We're not going to be. I'm just not gunning for him to harm him. But I'm telling you he's a coward. I want you to understand that for this reason. The whole entire city in which we grew up, the black community of that city, gave this nigga a pass. The women or the girls gave this dude a pass. It didn't matter that he was a coward and everybody knew he ran from fights. That didn't matter. It didn't matter that he was actually kind of goofy in the way he behaved. That didn't matter. He could dance and he could play basketball and the girls thought he was cute. Ironically, they thought several guys were cute, but they gave this nigga a pass to be a bitch because of it. That's the part I couldn't understand. Oh, and the niggas, uh, he was a colorist. He may still be in terms of, oh, in terms of what black women consider to be a colorist. He will marry and date only light-skinned women. Um, and he got that from his mother. I promise you he got that from his mother. I could guarantee that to you. So, um, because I know, I knew her too. The only reason I say I knew is because she's not with us anymore. But she was never a mean person. However, this is one of the legacies that we have from slavery. And, and she passed that on, whether she meant to or not. And now I'm telling you at this point, I'm letting you know that this was a serious issue. Uh, this was a serious criteria he had most of his life. But what's more important that I want you all to understand is that black women in our community gave this nigga a pass to be things they don't even give other niggas a pass to be. So much so that he actually made money by doing one thing that niggas would love to be able to do and make money for, throwing parties. The summer after we graduated from college. Uh, at this point, this was after his uh, weekend that he spent with Brandy. He threw a party. Nigga just threw a party, but he charged money to get in. Now, you know, if you throw a party, most of you, you can't charge money because your boys are going all everybody's your boy that day. And they all want to hook up. Right. And the girls damn sure ain't going to pay in because they're going to say lady's supposed to get in free because we got a vagina. No, no, no. The girls paid. So the men paid. So he fought, he made money hand over fist and he used that to start an entertainment company doing this professionally under a license for a living. Now, that was a smart business move. The problem is that many smart business moves don't lead to success. And that is based on the market, not even based on the entrepreneur. So I'm not necessarily faulting him uh, by his own moral standards. I'm faulting the community by their own moral standards. Because they made this nigga rich. In a way, they would have never made anybody else rich if the person had a sense of responsibility and morality. He did not. When he threw the party, nobody circled around the venue and tried to open up the fire escape door so that everybody could flood in. Nobody circled around the venue, texting somebody on the inside, hey man, you win, hey girl, you win, open the fire escape so we can get in this bitch and not pay. None of that nigga shit. He sold admission and he sold drinks and he got paid hand over fist and he went and got a license and then he did it legally. And to this day, this is his income and he, he has not worked a nine to five. 
because the community didn't demand this of him. But if this is the type of nigga that he is, why did Brandy, who was famous at this point, go to the game and pick him out just from seeing him on the field and lower herself to spend a weekend fucking a commoner and buying clothes for him? I mean, by by what many of you say about hypergamy and how many sisters now were saying we need to practice hypergamy. If anything, why would she do this? She's Brandy. <laughs> who was he? You don't know his name because I wouldn't put anybody's privacy out there like that. Even this niggas. But some of you actually, if you've some of you from the Gulf Coast, you may have actually been there. You might know who I'm talking about. <laughs> if you ask him, who was that dude that fought you in your driveway and you called you told his friends to come break y'all up? He would tell you. But he's not going to admit that he called my friends to come break us up. He's going to say, oh, you know, I slung that nigga around. Yeah, man, I slung that ugly ass light skinned nigga around. And he ain't even much darker than I am. But I want you to understand that this there's the reason that Kobe should not have gone anywhere with Brandy. Look what Brandy wants. The nigga. He was and this dude I'm talking about, he ain't no thug. He got nigga juice. He got swag, but he ain't no thug. He ain't got he's not scaring people. He's entertaining niggas, but he ain't scaring people. Do you understand the depths to which she sank according to what black women themselves say that women should no longer do? If they saw this dude, they would justify everything Brandy did. Girl, no, 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 no. You said you have been saying that men have to do and have and be all of this to qualify for women at this particular level. Way below, way, 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 way below Brandy. I'm talking like people that knew Brandy when she was a kid and, and she don't remember them no more. To qualify for one of them, who now probably has a bunch of babies by several different baby daddies, to qualify for them, what does a man have to do and have and be? Oh, I see, but then this dude over here can actually be a known coward trying to pick fights with little kids because he can win. Stooping to that level just because he thinks, oh, he gonna win. No conscience when he was dealing with people smaller than him because he could win. And everybody knew this about him. And yet and still, y'all validated him. Those of you in my hometown validated him. But then here comes Brandy from out of town and validates this nigga. I'm going to be honest. If I was Kobe and I saw a hint of this, I would have bounced. And truth be told, if I had had Kobe's money back in 1996, I would be married to a not only foreign, but a non-black woman. Actually, I would have been married to more than one today. Because in 1996, when that was my 1995-96, uh, that was my first year of college. And that was when I began to realize I cannot afford to keep approaching African-American women. Now, I didn't say I would never be with them. What I did say is I would not approach them. And I held true to that for forever. Ever since then. The only times I ever made approaches were on behalf of somebody else. Never for myself, not to a black woman. And I learned that approaching them on behalf of other men would make the other guy look bad. So I stopped doing it even then. Then I only uh, approached for directions, business, just being nice and polite. N never made an approach. Yet and still, I only wound up with sisters. But like I said... There always had to be something wrong, something seriously wrong, not just humanly wrong, but something seriously wrong. Kobe um, must have seen it early on. Should he have slept with that white woman in Eagle, Colorado? Absolutely not. Because it's America, she's white, he's black, and because he was married. Most importantly, he was already married. But I'm just going to call it what it is. Looking back, I can't ask him, and he could not answer if I did. But I can, looking back, I can honestly tell you. Um, I just can't prove it. That he saw that there was something in probably black women and men that was broken, but that sisters did not want to fix what is broken. I think that's what he saw, in all honesty. And I believe that Brandy was probably when he actually... I mean, he took her to the prom. I believe that that time with Brandy was when he probably saw it more clearly than ever before. He was getting back from having lived abroad. You know, 
uh, he took her to the prom, so that means that he was around her and others like her. And I think that's when he saw it. Look at her, look at what she expects, and look at these others. Oh, hell no. I hope that what I'm saying is not true. I hope that what I'm saying will not be true one day in the future. In the meantime, I hope it's a benefit. But I'm afraid that what Kobe saw when he took Brandy to the prom is probably going to uh, be exactly what we've been seeing more uh, lately because he had access to see it more. Here he was, up and coming, a rising star, and he still was probably not treated like he was worth much. It should not have gone anywhere. And you can tell based on who Brandy picked when she was free to do so. Brandy didn't have to know the guy that I fought. It's not required. That nigga was nothing. She went out of her way to pick him. And she would have, you ask her, she doesn't know what to do. She would have said it was just something about him. If she even admits that this happened. It was just something about him. Yeah, I know exactly what it is. She picked up on the fact that this nigga was a low character, but he could entertain you. That's what it was. And that's what a lot of sisters have been going through, especially when they're attractive and they're not 200 pounds. So, um, to those of you that are against SYSBM, like I've said, go back and tell the Daggle to change who the hell they are. And that's for the next generation because they done lost us. And they deserved to. Blackheart, sign a blackout. Assalamu alaikum and black male power.